Hello, I'm Donald Leggett. Welcome to the latest London South East CEO interview. I'm joined today by Tom Reynolds. He's the CEO at Scirocco Energy. And Scirocco, as you may well know, have just announced the sale of a 25% stake in the Tanzanian gas field Ruvuma uh, to Wentworth Energy on Monday for up to $16 million. This is a transformative deal which brings cash and momentum to the Scirocco strategy after a two-year sales process. And Tom is here today to put the deal in context for us. Welcome, Tom. Morning, Donald. Thanks very much for having me. No, uh, believe you me, the pleasure is ours. Uh, perhaps we could start by asking you to explain what the Ravuma asset is and what the, what the deal consists of. Sure. So the Ravuma asset, it's an onshore petroleum exploration license in Tanzania. Uh, Sirocco, back when it was solo oil, joined the license by funding some historic activity. And we own a 25% interest in the asset. Um, what the deal consists of, um, we first announced our intention to sell the asset back in Q2 2022. And we've been running a process since then. And, uh, you know, it's not a deep asset market in Tanzania, very different to the UK CS market, for example, less players. And it's taken that time to get to here. But the deal is basically a sale uh, of the asset, as you say with uh, the value getting up to $16 million, depending on successful outcomes on the asset itself over time. Okay, and why this deal? Why is this a strong deal? Why is this a good deal in, from your perspective? So I, I think I come back to first principles here, Donald, and the key strength for us is it frees Sirocco from the cash calls associated with the current activity plan. So that frees up our resources to get after the new strategy. Um, and it also allows us to be paid more over time if the asset actually proves to be commercial over that time. And what were the cash calls? Were they quite considerable? So the current uh, budget for the asset for the current activity plan net to Sirocco is $6.25 million. So it's quite meaningful, particularly when you consider that relative to our current market cap. And where would, what, would, what would be your options in terms of funding uh, that $6 million? I mean, simply put, Donald, it would be an equity raise. Um, and uh, I think part of the consideration here is uh, myself and the board looked at that option and, you know, one on an asset that doesn't sit with our shareholder approved investment strategy two, one that we've said from a strategic perspective, we want to sell and three, the level of uncertain dilution that would be delivered to shareholders in the event that we had to raise that money. Because as you know yourself, Donald, availability of cash in the public market is never guaranteed. And it's certainly never guaranteed at a price that you might find acceptable. And I think it was that cocktail of considerations that we felt uh, made this a very good alternative for Sirocco shareholders. So it's quite a, it's quite a high risk alternative for pursuing uh, the project as it stands. It's a bit like beauty, risk is in the eye of the beholder. And, uh, you know, again, I come back to our first principles here. We laid out our strategy in the context of wanting to provide a sustainable growth story for our shareholders. And sticking with uh, Ravuma in Tanzania would make this effectively a single asset bet. And I don't believe that represents a sustainable story for our shareholders. It's a bit of a binary bet on a single asset. And if it doesn't go well, you're not really left with a sustainable business story. So that's that flows, why that, that flows very nicely into my next question, Tom. Essentially, this deal allows you to fund and develop a new strategy around sustainable and renewable energy, which is your new thing. So, which is which is actually quite a big deal. Uh, explain why the new strategy is preferable to EMP and gives a sense of what the acquisition pipeline looks like. Sure. So, I mean, you know, picking up on on that point I was making, you know, this is a fundamental pivot which probably has three underlying principles. One's about risk reward. The next is about availability of capital. And then the third part, which is probably the most important is the extent to which the strategy is deliverable under the board's control. And looking through each of those lenses, again, single asset risk in Tanzania, where the timescale of progress isn't necessarily in your control as a non-operator uh, in that one asset. Um, and there is remaining geological uncertainty. Uh, on the asset and you know that's why seismic is being shot and a well will be drilled and and so that moving away from that binary bet um, what are we offering with the alternative investment strategy is the ability to create a sustainable investment vehicle 
focusing on cash generative assets. So when we put money to work, we move straight to cash generation. That cash is then coming back to us and available for reinvestment in further acquisitions. I think availability of capital is key. Everybody will be uh, aware of the ESG movement and the, particularly the impact that's had on the availability of capital. Um, and we believe that we will have access to capital to invest in the sort of assets we're targeting. And, and then I think the, the final piece here is under the board's control, what we've seen since we embarked on this strategy back in late 2020, early 2021, is we've seen a large number of bite-sized opportunities that we believe are within our capability from a technical and commercial point of view to actually buy and build on. Okay, uh, that flows nicely into my next question. What, the, what does the acquisition pipeline look like then? Presumably you've had a couple of years to, to, to be working on that. So what does that look like now? Yeah, so you, you'll be aware of the first um, investment that we made in a company called Energy Acquisitions Group, EAG. Uh, it's our buy and build strategy targeting anaerobic digestion uh, assets. And the team there completed their first acquisition with our help back in September, October, 2021. And just to give you a sense of what a unit looks like there, these are half megawatt anaerobic digestion plants and they produce, you know, the, uh, the cost of one of those or the value of one of those is around three million pounds. And they produce currently with the higher energy prices about 600,000 pounds of EBITDA a year. So those are the sort of metrics we're looking at. Um, what we've seen working with EAG is there's a large number, I mean, I would count them, uh, in terms of actionable opportunities in the next six months, certainly two or three immediate things we could pursue of a similar type. Um, and one of the developments that EAG has, has come up with over the last uh, 12 months that we've been working with, which we've talked about in our public materials, is nutrient recovery from the digestate material that is left behind. It's a bit technical, uh, but effectively you've got a nutrient rich soup that's left behind in these AD plants after the gas has been produced. And that can be reprocessed into basically an organic fertilizer, which given the macro issues just now about access to fertilizer and pricing of fertilizer, looks like being able to add a very interesting revenue stream. So that would be the first call on our cash. So in terms of acquisition pipeline, I'm confident we could actually get after quite a lot of really interesting things in the short term. Okay, thank you. So let's turn back to the deal. Was Wentworth the only interested purchaser? You say that in that part of Africa, there aren't, there aren't so many people around, not so many players. Talk us through the two-year process, or I should say, talk us briefly through the two-year process, because this could be a very long conversation. Yeah, let's not take two years to explain the two-year process. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think the fact that it took two years tells you something. Uh, you know, refer back to the comments I made earlier, that the Tanzanian asset market is not deep and liquid. There's not a large amount of parties active in that market. Um, and we got off to a slow start due to all the issues that were going on in 2020. Uh, 2020. Um, but effectively, what we did was we ran a structured process. We produced a, you know, the sales documentation that you would expect. We caught, contacted a reasonably large number of companies that had stated or potential interest in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Tanzania in particular. And were Subset these quite, those, like, quite good quality companies? So they range from private companies to public companies, and obviously the, the successful ultimate buyer here that we've signed up with went with as a public company. Um, and you know, a subset of those companies looked at the data room and narrowed it down. Early in 2021, we actually got very close to binding terms with a private company, but unfortunately it just didn't crystallize. Um, and then we began talking with Wentworth as part of a process refresh in Q4 2021. And it's really taken since then to get to here uh, with Wentworth. Okay, I can see the Ravuma gas asset makes a good fit for Wentworth because they're there on the ground in Tanzania. So how did you value that, that fit? Uh, would you have been happy with this price and this deal if it had been offered to you two years ago? This is a big question. It is a big question, you know, and I think you have to take these things in the round and also you have to take account of the fact it has taken two years to get here, which tells you something. Uh, you know, uh, there is an element of the market has spoken if this is what is on the table two years on, having been through the process we've been through. Um, I think what I would say, uh, you know, that is really positive about working with Wentworth on this, they're an established producer, they're ambitious in country, they have cash flow, strong local presence. So for Sirocco as the counterparty, 
means the uh, low completion risk. You know, I think we have got uh, a high degree of confidence this deal will complete and, and hopefully complete in pretty short order, which is important to all of us so we can get on with what we want to do. Very good. Uh, and, and talk us through the loan. You mentioned the loan. How does that work? Yeah, so uh, the, the loan is, in, is structured and intended to be secured against the Ruvuma asset. Uh, and it allows us to draw down equal amounts so that when Sirocco receives a cash call during the interim period before we complete, we can draw down on the loan and fund that cash call with the cash from Wentworth. So this is the critical point about the deal that I mentioned at the outset, which is that it clears us from having to find that capital to fund the activity plan. So I think it's a really critical part of the deal. Um, the way it works is it's a secured loan against Ravuma Asset, as I said, perfect that security, um, it has to get Tanzanian authority approval, uh, as is common in, in securities of that type and secured loans, uh, and that might take a little while. So whilst the loan accrues in scale, um, for the first $3 million, there's no interest. If the loan gets to $3 million, then we then start to accrue interest. So we're not paying cash interest, but it accrues interest at a rate of 7% per annum. Uh, until the until completion takes place. And I think this is a critical mechanism for people to understand. When completion takes place, the consideration would, uh, under what's called adjustments in the contract, would normally have been increased by the amount of interim period costs. So the consideration is increased by the costs that we fund during that interim period. And then at completion, those are repaid to us by cancelling the loan. So effectively, I want to make really clear that the loan is part of the whole deal. And the fact that we are taking out this loan doesn't make doesn't take money back off Sirocco. Um, it's, it's locked into the deal. So it basically means we're in the same position at completion as we would have been, but we haven't had to fund cash calls in the meantime. Okay. Yeah. So why did, why did Sirocco not just stay as a non-operating partner of Ravuma Develop the gas field with Amonex to completion. Oh, well, we've talked about that, haven't we? It's funding, isn't it? And uh, dilution of share, shareholder. Do you want to just nod to that quickly? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think it's, um, I think this is about what we have been very clear about in our market statements for over a year now in terms of our go forward strategy and why our intention to exit Tanzania was 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 arrived at in the first place and you're, you're right donald you know we've, we've covered that it's about access to capital it's about being in control of your own destiny in terms of being able to drive pace and drive activity through what you want to buy and how you want to grow um and uh you know a single asset play in tanzania with remaining technical geological development uncertainty when that's all we have on against sirocco's balance sheet did not make good risk reward calculation for shareholders in the board's view. And uh, the alternative strategy, which we put to a shareholder vote at AGM in 2021, and it was voted and supported by 99.6% of those voting, uh, has been ratified. And we're moving forward on that basis. We've made the first investment in EAG. And you know, I'm, I'm really excited about the ability to put money to work in a growing business with a really robust cash generative asset base. Um, and you, know, you, you said it yourself just now, I think if we were to contract back and say, all we're going to do is, uh, is the Ravuma asset here, we would have to find a considerable amount of money, broadly equivalent to our market cap today, uh, in a market that right now isn't great, but at any time, there can be no guarantee that you can access all the funds you need and certainly all the funds you need at an acceptable price. And I think the level of dilution for shareholders would be catastrophic uh, if we were to go down that path. Okay. The deal with Wentworth is worth up to $16 million. Uh, briefly talk us through the elements and the timeline for payments. Please tease, tease sure. that out for us. Sure. So there's, there's, there's two chunks or two parts to the deal. There's, there's what we will be paid over time uh, for the sale of the asset. And then there's also a loan arrangement, which effectively Wentworth will advance us uh, cash to fund the cash calls from basically this point forward, roughly. And I can get into more detail about the loan uh, in a minute if that's helpful. But in terms of what we will be paid, 
uh, it's split into four separate elements, uh, and those are in order at completion, a $3 million initial payment. At the point, uh, the joint venture takes a, a final investment decision to develop gas, i.e. there is a commercial development to happen on the licence, as judged by the joint venture at the time, then we'll receive a further $3 million. Uh, when that development, if approved, gets to first gas, we start to participate in a share of Wentworth net cash flow uh, until we reach $8 million total. Uh, and then finally, if the development uh, reaches a high level of gross cumulative production at 50 BCF, we receive a final upside payment of $2 million. Very good. So it's actually structured so that as the project uh, delivers, uh, then so you uh, uh, then then so you you gain. That's right, and I think that talks to an acknowledgement of the remaining underlying uncertainty in the asset. You know, it's it's not a slam dunk that this is apply cash here, drill well, produce gas, and everybody's happy. You know, there is you know there's there's meaningful uncertainty, and that's why seismic's being shot. And you know, a new well will be drilled, and then the joint venture will take a view whether they have something commercial to develop, and that is reflected in the terms of the deal. But presumably, you do think that gas will be found, a development will be made, and you will end up getting your sixty million or close to. Uh, I'm certainly hopeful. I mean, there is a discovery well on the the site uh, uh, in the original uh, wells that were drilled some years ago. Uh, I think one of the things is that uh, the current well is going to test a much greater extent, as in you know, much bigger gas, which, as I say, is uncertain. Uh, a successful well, which can be one in the upcoming well, uh, will be uh, very successful and prove up a large volume. And, and therefore, you know, we'd be confident that development would go ahead and, and, and these payments, these follow-on payments would happen. Okay, uh, getting to the end of the interview now. Uh, when do shareholders vote on this, Tom? Uh, you mentioned 2021, it was all voted on previously, so that was all good. Um, now it's time to vote again. Uh, what would you recommend uh, people vote for? Yeah, and I'm hoping this wouldn't come as a surprise here, Donald, but uh, for all the reasons we've discussed today, uh, myself and the board are strongly recommending that shareholders vote in favour of the deal. Uh, it clears up the company, it clears our feet of, uh, of our legacy asset in Ravuma. It'll, it frees up our financial and, and technical resources to concentrate on the new shareholder approved investment strategy. And it lets us get after that deal flow pipeline that we talked about. And do you think the majority of folks are, are going to be with you? The majority of the investors are going to uh, take that perspective? So we've, as we said in our, our announcements, we're going into that EGM with uh, support from a group of core shareholders and those of the board. I think that totals 14 and a half, roughly, percent, 14.4% percent, uh, of shareholders. And, and I hope through, through exercises like this, through talking to you today, shareholders will get a sense of uh, the pros and cons of the deal. And, and, and I would, as I say, I would strongly recommend they vote in favour. Okay, and very briefly, a final question. What news flow can we expect in the next few months from you? So obviously the first thing in, in the calendar is the EGM on the 29th, uh, which will be a, a watershed moment in the company and, and hopefully with support will allow us to move forward. Following that, we'll be working closely with the EAG on some of the acquisition opportunities that I mentioned earlier. And we have been looking at other areas as an analog to EAG in other areas like wind power, like EV battery charging, some things at the periphery of hydrogen refueling uh, networks and technology, all of which fits with our investment policy that we've, uh, we've put out there. So I think uh, as we go through the second half, shareholders can look forward to you know, value adding cash generative acquisitions in our portfolio of investments as we go forward. Okay, so we've got a vote to look forward to and then uh, lots of exciting prospects uh, lie ahead. Tom Reynolds, CEO at Shirok Energy, thank you so much for your time. Uh, that was quite complex. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to break it all down for us uh, very clearly. Thank you. That was really helpful. Uh, for more free company information and data for Shiroko Energy, please go to the SCIR uh, pages on London Southeast. Do follow London Southeast on Twitter. That's at London Southeast or register on London Southeast YouTube to receive alerts to interviews like this one. Thanks for watching.
And as always, stay safe.